Hey, I'm Simon and in this video you will learn how to create a learn more element with a hover animation in Webflow. I'll give my best to make it as beginner friendly as possible and cover every single step. I'd recommend watching the full video because there's a lot of helpful information for you to become a web better Webflow developer. Let's get started now. All right, so I've already created a Webflow project to get started immediately with the first step. And this is adding a section. You can also just use a div element in this case, or you can go for the Webflow section element. I'm going to use a div block in this case. And here on the div block, I'm going to head to the selector panel and add the section name, which is section tutorial because we want to have clear class naming so that we know what's going on everywhere. And on the section tutorial, I'm just going to head to the backgrounds. And here, um, I'm just going to set the background color to steel gray to make it easier for you to see everything that's going on. And also, I'm just going to set the viewport height to a hundred viewport height uh, the, um, so that it just fills up the full viewport, obviously. And Yep, so we have the section set up and next we're going to add a link block because we want to um, we want our read only or learn more to be clickable, obviously, and lead to somewhere, um, whether that um, is a blog post or whatever, or another page, maybe. So here with the link block, I'm going to create a new class of uh, learn more. And here we just created the learn more. But as you can see, it's in the left top corner and we don't want it to be there. We want it to be centered for now. So I'm just going to um, on, to set the display to flex on the section tutorial class here. So it's the second option here. And with align center and justify center, we can center the link block here, the learn more. Inside the learn more, we obviously want text. So. Um, I've got this text here. I'm going to type in learn more for a second here. Um, we've got this. We don't even need to add a class in this case because we'll just leave the text as it is and we won't style it. And the second thing we also need to add is an icon because like this, um, yeah, it's just not as cool as if there is an icon too. So I'm going to use an image for this here and at the media, um, I'm just going to add an image here. And I'm going to choose the image. So in this folder here, in my assets, it leads to the assets here. I've got the arrow SVG. You can also use other formats, but SVG is the best format for something like this because it has a really small file size and that is good for your performance, for example. So we've got the arrow here. And it's not as we would like to have it. Um, so with the learn more selected here, I'm going to also set this to flexbox and this immediately now um, changed it from vertical to horizontal. And we also want a little bit of space between the learn more and the arrow here. So what I'm going to do in this case is create a new class of learn more arrow. And on the learn more arrow, I'm going to use margin. So margin is the space outside of an object or outside of an element, I should say. And here I'm going to use, um, for example, let's say, let's go for 16 pixel or yeah, let's just use 16 pixels. So as you can see, it's now like that. We could also adjust the size of the arrow icon, but I think it's pretty good as it is right now. So now that we've set it up like this, we can already see in the preview mode that we get the link block cursor, obviously, but nothing is happening when we hover over the learn more, but we want a nice hover animation. So that's what we're going to create now. And for this, the first thing that you'll need to make sure you do is to have the link block selected and not one of these elements, but the link block actually. So with the link block selected, I'm going to head to the interactions tab in the right top corner. And here I'm going to set up an element trigger, which um, I can do with the plus icon here. It opens up this menu here and we are going to select the mouse hover trigger. 
because we obviously want the animation to be when someone hovers over our learn more link block. So here on hover, we're not going to choose any of these options here because these are just uh, pre-made um, animations that are not the ones that we want to use right now. So we are going to start an animation, a custom animation here. And there are a lot of things going on here, but you should just create a new animation here with this plus icon. Again, you can create a new animation. So that's what I just did. And it currently says new timed animation. I'm just going to name it learn more hover in. So we've got the learn more hover in animation, the interaction. And now we actually need to switch elements because we don't want the change to appear on any of uh, on the learn more link block, but instead of on just on the arrow. So I'm going to select the arrow in the elements panel. And with the arrow selected, I'm going to click this plus icon here to add a um, interaction type, you could say, um, just an action here. So with move, um, I now have this thing appearing. And if you're not familiar with Webflow interactions, there are um, a lot of different things here, which you might not understand as of now, but you can just leave it like this, only children with this class and affect the class. You don't need to worry about this for now. And also, um, yeah, you don't need to add a, a delay or something like this. This just means um, if you hover over it, if you add a delay, then it will take some time until the animation is actually being displayed and actually visible. Starting, you could say. So we've got the duration too. This just means how long it will take for um, how long the animation will take. And I'm just going to lower this to um, 0.4 seconds like that. I just uh, change it a little bit. And with the easings, you should not go for a custom easing, just leave it as preset. And then if you click here, um, currently the option is linear, none. And the easing generally just means how the animation um, is looking like, kind of, because it means if it starts um, slow, for example, and then it gets faster, the animation, or if it starts really fast and then slows down and eases. So, um, as a starter, uh, you'll be a little bit confused maybe because there are a lot of different options. But for a start, I can advise you to just use ease in most of the cases because um, it's generally pretty good. So we've got ease and a duration of 0.4 seconds. And we actually need to set what's going to happen in the animation because these things, they are not actually deciding what's going to happen. They're not declaring what's going to happen in the animation, but instead this here on the bottom, we've got move. So we want the arrow to move in our hover animation. So that's why I will just move this a little bit, like uh, maybe eight pixel is good, or we could increase it slightly, maybe to 12 pixels so that we can really see that it's moving. Um, and that's basically it. We don't need to do any further things so we'll just save the animation like it is. And we can already see if we had hit the preview option here that the arrow is moving like this. So this would happen if someone hovered over the learn more as of now. And as you can see, if we switch to the preview mode, the problem is if we hover out, it won't um, go back. And we want it to be hoverable all the time. So what we're going to do is to add a hover out animation. So with the select an action um, option here, I'm just going to select the custom animation again. As I said, these are just pre-made animations and don't have anything to do with the learn more. So um, start an animation and we have the previous animation here and Maybe if you're not familiar with how the interactions work, you would just select this animation like that, but that's just problematic because it won't change anything because this won't set it back to the initial position. It will just, um, again, say 12 pixels to the right. So we can't use the previous animation. So maybe you would just create a new animation, which is completely fine, but 
what I would advise you to do instead to work faster is to just click these three dots here and duplicate the already created animation from before. So now we've got learn more hover in two and we're just going to select it for a second. And here on the settings, we can adjust what's going to happen here because it currently still is the same animation because we just duplicated it. I'm going to rename it to learn more hover out just to clarify what's going to happen in this interaction here because if you have a lot of interactions in your build, it can get pretty messy here. So we want to always define um, what's going to happen there. So now we can select this action again by clicking this here and we've already selected the element here immediately. And we could change the duration now or the easing or whatever. And um, but we won't do it in this case. And that's actually the biggest benefit of just duplicating the animation. You already have the right element selected here and the action setup. And additionally, you can just keep the easing and the duration or whatever other things you had in here. So maybe um, if you're a beginner, what you would do now is, okay, we moved it 12 pixels to the right. So we're just going to move it 12 pixels to the left like this. But that's actually not how we would do it um, with 12 pixels to the left. But instead, we're just going to set it to zero. Because if we set it to zero, then it just means that it goes back to its initial position. So that's it for um, the hover out animation. I'm just going to hit save. And now we can just switch to the preview mode here and see that it's already working awesome. It's um, already working perfectly fine. So I could say we're done with this tutorial, but there is still an issue with this. And I want to show you what will happen right now. So if we add a um, new link block, for example, here, new link block, and I'm just going to switch on the section tutorial here to Flexbox vertical here, center, center, just so that they are not next to each other. Learn more, but actually, um, yeah, like that. So with learn more, I'm just going to add the existing class already. Um, and inside, we can just copy over the text block here and the learn more arrow. All right, so we've got it. Uh, it looks just the same as the top learn more, but you can already see it in the interaction in the navigator here that um, there's this lightning here. Uh, this lightning icon here is only on the first instance. And we can confirm this here. You can see it's not nothing is happening here if we hover over the bottom learn more. And we um, could fix this by just adding the same interaction here on mouse hover. Um, that's just the same steps we had before. But I don't really like this option because it takes a lot of time and we don't want to waste time when we're building, obviously. So the best option for this would be, I'm just going to copy this um, so that we have more instances for you to see what's going to happen right now in a second. So. We are going to head back to the initial instance where we already have the interaction set up. And here we can now select instead of element, we can select class. And this is a huge time saver. We can also select which class will be affected right now. So um, this basically means that every single element inside of our build, which has the learn more class, will have this animation just from the start. From the moment you add the element, it will already have um, it will already have the interaction set. So we can already also confirm this here. Now we have the uh, lightning icons everywhere, and we could uh, do a live preview here. Element and the lightnings disappear, and class, and now they are back. So let's check it out in the preview mode. And wow. <laughs> It's working on every single instance. Didn't expect that at all. <laughs> um, great. So now I think you're really set to rebuild this in your own project. And you now you should probably know now how you can build a learn more in Webflow. Thank you for watching the video up to this point. I hope that you learned a lot. If that's the case, then make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel.
feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. That's it for today, see you soon and have a nice day.